you might be having a lot of question in your mind if you are doing your masters or if you might be doing or planning to do a phd or planning to take up a post doctoral position nationally which is in india or abroad you might be thinking one question in your mind is how do i have to choose a pi or how do i have to choose a research lab very specifically whether it is in india or whether it is ab abroad the protocols are going to be the same so i'm going to talk about how you can smartly choose a research lab and pi for your master or for your phd or for your postdoc whether it is nationally or whether it is internationally everything in detail so first let's talk about what you have to do initially when you're going to start off your phd or planning to start off your phd or planning to find a masters uh, project guide or you're planning to start off your postdoc so these are some of the questions you might be having in your mind so i'm going to list out the question if you're having a question like which lab do i have to apply i do not know which lab do i have to apply so how do i have to choose the exact pi of my research interest or how to approach a mentor or a pi how do i have to contact them and what are the topics that i have to choose for my research so if you have these questions in your mind uh, this 10 to 15 minute is going to be very very important for all of you so i'm going to tell you some of the tips that you have to definitely follow in order to fetch a very good pi and a research uh, labs also So first thing what you have to do is ask yourself some of the questions I've listed some of the questions for now you can take a moment and you can also start thinking as I proceed on with the video so the first question I'm going to ask you is do you really like to take research as a career this is the first important question because it's going to be a very long long run for you so just understand is research can become a career for you or just because of the sake of others are you taking this career so think if your answer is yes then you can proceed on to the the next question if not you can think about it the second time and then if not just leave the idea the second one is going to be are you passionate about science uh, whenever somebody talks about something very interesting about science are you feeling a kind of glow in your eyes or are you feeling a kind of peace in your mind are you passionate about science if you have that question definitely research is going to be your career and the third important thing is you have to do is what is the research topic that i have to choose or do i have to go for a basic research or do i have to go for applied research application oriented research or basic research you have to definitely know this one so choose it wisely if you think yes research can be my career and i love science and i have to take up a topic in such cases just divide it into a basic research you want to go for or applied research for now you just make only a basic outline of this and the next important thing is where you want to land where you really wanted to land whether after your research in masters or your phd or your postdoc do you want to enter into an academia field or do you want to go for r and d department or do you want to go for pharma companies or you want to go for any kind of startups so if you have these things in your mind first clear off all the questions and get all your answers cleared then after if you have all your answers clear the next important thing is you need to know what is your research interest so many students might be asking this question i do not know what is my research interest i'm going to give you one hint if somebody talks about suppose let me take if somebody talks about cancer some people will be excited they wanted to know why it happens what is the me me metabolism that happens inside uh, a cancer why it is uncontrolled growth taking place what are the drugs they are using how these drugs are actually targeting a very specific cell why not the other cell so these kind of questions usually pops up in your mind and you you really feel like something interesting is happening then that is going to be your research interest so some people might be thinking about plant biotechnology if anybody talks about plants they would really love to do so somebody would be really inclined towards microbes very specifically if anybody very inclined towards microbes they will always love to know what type of microorganisms how these microorganisms can be uh, released from the body so this kind of things usually happens so some people would be more inclined towards bioinformatics research like they are more related to coding researches and ng as a crispr they are very very much interested over there so some are more interested towards omics so whatever it is whichever you think that's going to be your research interest 
choose your research interest first so after having your questions choose your research interest first basic or apply and then go for what is your area of research it can be any of the things so i'm going to list out some of the examples it can be oncology it can be immunology it can be virology it can be proteomics it can be any type of your areas of research research are like sub topics or subdivision of all the big topics so it can be anything that you can have the next after choosing your um, research interest now you will get to a conclusion yes i have my research interest the next question comes for us is where do i have to do the research whether do i have to do the research in india or do i have to do the research abroad this question you have to ask if you feel yes i would like to do my research in india then proceed on doing it in india you can choose any of the laboratories like csar laboratories dbt labs or icmr icr dst funded labs or even you can do your research in some of the universities also so if you are thinking to do it in india then plan it accordingly and some of the laboratories usually takes uh, candidates without fellowship also most of the laboratories takes candidates with fellowship like you need to have your csar or cmr or dbt exams clear or gate exams clear whatever it is write those examination and get into those lab if not if you don't if you are not able to do so then you can enter as a uh, project assistant then you can convert into jrf phd and get registered over there that is also possible the next important thing is if you're thinking no i don't want to go for india i would like to go for abroad then choose the country of your interest now it can be any of the countries according to your expenses according to your uh, comfort comfortableness and culture differences or how far distance you want to go for so everything you take into consideration and now decide the country it can be from usa uk germany australia japan canada singapore or any part of the world i'm just list, listed some of the thing so after that choosing this now you know your research interest now you know which country you want to go for whether it is in india and you're going to plan if it's in india accordingly if it's abroad you're going to plan it accordingly now everything is chosen next the next important thing is get to know the research of interest in india and abroad what is that means so first what you have to do is suppose if a person is interested in oncology what you have to do is you have i have a very specific video done on that how you can actually gather a research paper very specifically in a particular topic very easily for a short duration of time you can watch out so read a research papers or articles which you are interested suppose you are interested in breast cancer then read research papers which are related to those papers and when you are reading itself you will analyze some of the pi's will be keep on publishing lot of papers in a very specific topic breast cancer it's it then you pick up the person's name pi and write those name and write where the person is exactly working in india or abroad and write it there and join some scientific research group you can also join some scientific research group in india if you are going to be there you can work as a project assistant or you can go and work as a summer intern just just join some research group so that you will have an idea what type of research that they are going for suppose if you are interested in reproductive research go to a laboratory where they does research on reproductive research and the next important effective method is attend conferences workshops so i found a lot of students master students anybody not attending conferences or workshops are there but i'm going to tell you if anybody is research, interested in research conferences as workshops are the one which is going to definitely network with people because there would be a lot of people who will come and present their papers in the form of papers or in the form of a posters so you'll get to know okay if you are interested in breast cancer you can look for people who are doing research in breast cancer there might be scientists will be coming and talking about and they might be in reputed laboratories or from abroad so you can directly go and talk to them and you can get the connection between them network between them you can get their email id everything so this is one of the important way of networking the next is meet pi in the conferences that's what i told you you can meet lot of principal investigators in the conference whether it is in india or abroad national conferences you will find it in india international conferences definitely you will find a pi coming from abroad if anybody wishing to go get to know the other research work which are related this is another thing suppose if you are liking breast cancer you should not be sticking on to that so you can think about how this breast cancer is related with a uterus cancer or how breast cancer can implicate any other cancers or is breast cancer is responsible for any other disorders is diabetes is any other thing so what you have to do is you have to connect your research interest with any other research interest so you can also find a person who is doing research on diabetes but a little bit correlation with breast cancer also so like this you you have to get to know the other research which are correlated to your research also 
now you got your research interest you find the location now you started looking for a person through any of these things okay now as you keep on searching for the person through your research papers or you started meeting people everything the next important thing i'm going to tell you is you found some of the list by reading a research paper or connecting with people through linkedin or anywhere else you have a potential supervisor list names but you have to go in detail whether it is in india or abroad wherever it is now if you want if you think like i would like to go to germany and i would like to work under this person then read their specific papers you don't have to read the other specific papers read their specific papers and understand what the research is going on so you can also go and check in the summary of the entire research that's been going on there in the laboratory now you get to know a very specific supervisor now the next come is okay is only choosing a pi is important i'm going to tell you no you have to choose whether the lab is also good that matters a lot because if a pi is good it's okay but do they have any kind of uh, infrastructure facilities in the laboratory also matters a lot because phd's or postdocs or if if i have to talk about very specifically phd it's a very long run it's going to be almost 5 to 6 years you cannot end up in an area which is actually uh, going to be not good enough for your research because it's going to be a long run then you have to choose some of the important things you have to choose either one of the labs i'm going to list out some of the labs so big labs with a senior pi so you can look for labs which has directors working in the laboratories usually directors senior scientists working in a laboratory senior principal investigators in the laboratory this labs usually do not have a problem with fundings if you see senior scientists or big laboratories which has all the facilities usually do not have but the interaction with the pi or the scientists becomes limited in this kind of laboratory because they would be assigned to many other tasks also Uh, so you would not be able to communicate to the pi or the scientist where in this kind of lab one problem you will face is you have to work independently that can be a reason but if you are someone who can do that then definitely this is going to be your uh, laboratory so you can choose a senior scientist or a big labs whether it is in india or abroad whatever it is the second important thing is mid size lab what this mid size lab is it's going to be like the person is going to be from any of the scientist positions not a senior one but they do have research grant and everything fine enough you have an opportunity to meet with a pi also this is possible in mid size lab the next one is a just a new started lab just now started with a young pi who has just completed a post doc positions or phd position and he would have started this lab this lab usually will have a limited amount of fundings there are labs which has fundings also you have to check on accordingly and here you have to work you can interact with the pi and one important thing is since you are starting a new laboratory and you'll be the first one to work over there so you have to put a lot of effort in this kind of labs so check on to which of the labs suits you the most and accordingly choose whether you want to go for big labs or mid size labs or new labs with a young pi so this is your work to do it whether which labs you wanted to go in for the next important thing okay now you have the supervisors list and you started reading a very specific supervisor and you're finding the research lab simultaneously the person in the same lab okay is this lab fine enough next one is you have to check now you had the person's name but you have to check whether everything is fine enough because you're going to go for 4 to 5 years if it's phd masters is going to be 6 to 7 months so what are the things that you have to consider in a research lab okay the pi is in this research lab only so you have to check what are the facilities that are available in the research lab what are the infrastructures that they have what is the quality of the lab and how many publications that they keep releasing every year and what is the quality of the research papers is the research paper is very good enough to be published is it of higher standards everything is this lab having a lot of research grants suppose in india dbt dst or icmr so many research funding grants are there so are they having so many fundings if it is abroad you have to look if in germany you have to look for a lot of fundings which will be given for a specific lab look for it funding opportunities are there or not that's very very important and and what are the current findings that's been done in the lab for now and then pi opening is there any pi opening uh, that's uh, if the pi is posting some of the opening for a phd positions or post doctoral positions or masters intern position check for the eligibility criteria look on to that and keep keep always a Uh, track of the lab website always so always if you are liking the person's research and you are finding the potential supervisor also and you like everything over there just always keep checking the laboratory website always and you have to check in for the current position of the alumnus uh, 
Uh, why means suppose if the person has completed their PhD and where is the person now? Is he after completing a PhD? Is he in academia or is he been placed in some of the postdoctoral positions abroad? So like that you need to understand what is the position of the PhD students who have gone out of the laboratories. The next one approach the alumnus of the laboratories. You can also approach through a LinkedIn, whether uh, how is the laboratory, everything in detail, you can get to know from them. Next, you can also check in for some collaborations. Some people in India, very specifically, they used to have collaborations with some DST laboratories or something else. In abroad, they used to have collaborations with medical hospitals, all this thing. So just look in for collaborations. When we talk in case of India, they have collaborations abroad also. You can look for that. Then you have to very specifically look, is this lab is going to be an ethical lab, which produces a very quality publication very ethically fine enough then look for all these things and always when you go for a research lab it's always good enough that you take feedbacks of the lab members and the neighbor lab members sometimes the present lab members will not be telling you the exact feedback so you can take it from the neighboring labs how this lab works exactly like that you'll get to know next important thing is you have already chosen a PI but you have to do a background check out of the PI how many number of PhDs have gone out of the laboratory from his lab and number of projects that he has completed and how many publications he has what is the present publication it shouldn't be like uh, long back 10 years back he has published like that it should be some recent publications and what's the citation and is it being promoted uh, from scientist positions and where is he now and what are the current projects that's been going on and you can also take some advice from the scientific or private groups through any of the social media about this laboratory also so this is the background check that you're going to do it for the pi also as well as for the research lab where the PI is actually there check everything thoroughly after checking everything thoroughly then we are going to go and look for fundings so if you're going for abroad then you have to definitely look for fundings you're going to approach the PI through an email email and then you can ask for a funding if fundings are available. If it is not available, then you have to look for a scholarship. In India, this is going to be different because if you write an exam, you'll definitely have a fundings. So if you do not have any examination, then you have to approach them whether they have fundings or not for you. Then look for fundings, fellowships or for scholarship. The next important thing is how do I have to approach whether a PI in India or abroad that everything is going to be similar. Timely apply. Whenever the notification come, apply it those time and documents and transcripts. So very specifically, what are the documents? Transcripts are very important for India and abroad. SOP in some part of India, SOPs are important. Mostly in abroad, SOP statement of purpose, very, very important. How, why do you want to join? And letter of recommendation in both the scenario is important. Publications, if you have, then you can have it. Then, of course, your personalized CV for this position. The next one is emailing a PI. You can email the PI and ask for a position or you can apply to a university when you're going abroad and then you can get connected with the PI or apply for the scholarship or fellowship that where all the universities will be participating in that you can choose the PI also. So this is how you have to approach the PI and the research group. So first I'm going to tell you. So if you're going to have these questions in your mind, then I told you that I'm going to answer your question. And you have you ask all the questions that I told you and find your research interest. And after finding whether you want to go for India or abroad, then get to know uh, what are the things that you have to do to know your research interest and how you can uh, know the PI. And if you find the PI, then read their specific papers. And not only the PI, look for the research lab where the PI is and do a background check out of the PI and the research lab and look for fundings, fellowships and scholarship and finally approach them. So if you're going to do that, it's going to be very simple even for your master's project or for your PhD or for your uh, postdoctoral position. So this is how it works, whether it is in India or whether it is in abroad. So I believe that this video is definitely going to be a great help. So if you have any questions regarding this one, you can always put it in the comment section. So if you have any suggestions regarding this one, you are always welcome to put your comments over there. So thank you all of you for joining. I'm going to meet you back again. Thank you.